Okay, so the last video on getting started. I'm going to actually show you the paint station and going over some nice to haves and some advanced tools. Um, it's going to be kind of shaky because I'm actually holding this uh, this webcam here. So back off just a little bit. And again, I apologize and kind of go around the uh, around the room. So if I go here, uh, a light. You're going to need a good light. This is just a normal desk lamp, as you can see. It's got, but it's got a nice bright uh, bulb in it. It's not one a true light bulb. It's a soft white bulb, but it's the uh, floodlight type of bulb, and it's a very high lumens uh, rating. Um, if you're going to do an airbrushing, you need a fan, or you need one of those stations that actually wicks the uh, stuff away. As you can see here, I have a paint rack. I hold all my paints. Um, this paint rack I got off of Amazon, I believe. It's an acrylic nail polish uh, rack that they have, you know, or um, all those places. But anyway, you can find them off of eBay or on Amazon. I think this was $30 to hold all the paints, which is really nice. Um, these are just a little uh, plastic cabinets. Everybody's seen these things before, right? Put your stuff in. Seen it before, okay? Um, you know, a few bucks here and there. You can use to get them used without too, too expensive. This is a self-healing mat, the green mat here, self-healing mat. Um, nice to have. You don't have to have it, but if you care about what you're doing your uh, your work on, which I do not, um, you definitely need one. It's also nice because you're cutting things on here, not to gouge into the uh, uh, the wood itself. And to tell you the truth, it's just nice to have on and be able to attach things to it, and you know those sort of things. You have your center, which is your work area. So this is kind of what I'm working on right now. Sometimes it helps to have a magnifying glass. You probably have on a home. If you want, you could always get one of these stupid things. It's like 30 cents little uh, piece of plastic right here. It helps you zoom in on some things. Maybe not what you want to do detailed work on, but it doesn't hurt to have it around. Um, moving over here, I have all my paint brushes. I don't have a paintbrush holder. Instead, what I got was just a piece of uh, styrofoam. Uh, spray painted black just because, and then stick my brushes in there. And then I have kind of like a system in the back of my used up brushes that I don't really care about anymore that are meant for things like alcohol based paints or oil washes and whatnot. And then as you move forward, obviously, anything with the cap over is brand new. But then I have my unused brushes or and my used brushes as well. And I know what they're all used for. I'm not going to go into a tutorial on brushes right now, but we have brushes. Advanced tool is going to be your airbrush and compressor. I could say anything more except I have an airbrush and I'm learning to use it. I won't say I'm an expert at it, but it's it's a nice to have. It's a big investment, okay? Two hundred to five hundred bucks between the compressor, the tank, the airbrush, and the line. This is a very large investment. Again, eBay, eBay, eBay. I think I got the compressor for about eighty eighty bucks or so. I got the uh, the airbrush for I think fifteen. Uh, the hose I had to actually get from the local hobby store was $35. Can't believe that. $35 bucks for a hose. I try to make my own, but to tell you the truth, this does a better job. My airbrushing station and my painting station. Um, here I have, of course, my water pot. You've already seen that. Uh, I have a rag. This rag right here is for cleaning out my airbrush. I have my airbrush cleaning stuff in the back there, which I won't go over. Just a normal um, old t-shirt to wipe your brush off on really important to have, trust me, you usually get too much paint on your brush when you need to, you don't want it to run all over your model to wipe it off on this. You don't have to have it, but it definitely helps me and I use it almost every single stroke of paint. Now wet palette here, um, you can supplement this, as I said before, one of the first things you're supposed to get is parchment paper. So what you do is you get parchment paper, get yourself an old plate or a styrofoam plate, anything that doesn't soak up water as a base. You put your uh, paper towels on top of it, okay? Wet the paper towels down until they're saturated and put your parchment paper on top of that, and that's your palette. The reason you want a wet palette is because if you just use a dry palette, just like a piece of paper, or really anything that's non-porous, a piece of glass, whatever, you're going to find your paint's going to dry out very, very quickly, and quicker probably than you can use it. A wet palette prevents that. Also, when you're painting, you have to get the right mix of paint. I'm not going to go over that, but again, you have to thin your paint. You get to a point where you know exactly how thin you want your paint. If you have a wet palette, when you use it and you get the right consistency, you're going to have that consistency and maintain that consistency for 
quite some time, all up 20, 30 minutes sometimes on this stuff. If you don't have a wet palate, you're going to get the consistency and the flow you want. And in about three minutes, as water evaporates off that, you're going to lose that. And you're going to have to constantly go back and keep rethinking your paint, uh, which is going to lead to a thinner paint uh, overall. You're going to have to do more, more layers and so on and so forth. So anyway, wet palette's really nice to have. This is, again, P3. It's got a sponge on it, right? And uh, you just fill this up with water. You put those little um, palette papers that I told you here before. You know, but again, to supplement this and not spend the money, plate, non-porous plate of some sort, paper towels for two bucks, parchment paper for two bucks, use that instead. I have drawers that have all my stuff in it. Now, I showed you all this stuff here before. Uh, you need a lot of storage space. Um, brush cleaner. Definitely want that. I have another video that tells says about brush cleaner. You definitely want to use brush cleaner if you're getting into this at some point in time. Again, these are all future things. Some point in time to uh, uh, to, to maintain and prolong life of your brushes. Um, this right here is just some uh, painting tape to mask things off when I'm doing airbrushing. Um, gloves. Um, let's see. I'm probably doing a product thing. Can't show that right. Anyway, black nitrile gloves or whatever type of gloves. Again, your hands have oils, and if they sweat at all, you get uh, um, water on it, and that acts as a solvent. And as you handle your model, it takes off takes off the paint. So you just do a nice paint job, and you go back and you bled some of that stuff off. Wearing gloves, at least on the hand that you're going to hold the model with, so if you're right-handed on your left hand, um, really assists in keeping your model pretty pretty pristine. Uh, again, more stuff down here. This is where I keep all of my models. You want a place to actually have the models that you're getting ready to, to paint. Um, you also want to save all of the bits or the pieces that come along with it or the extra pieces off of your sprue because you never know when you're going to need them. And then, again, big one. I have a Dremel down there and Mineral Spirits and Hot Glue Gun and some other things. Um, the other item that I highly recommend is that sucker right there. This is one of these uh, strap-on-your-head lamps, right? It's very, very bright. It's really nice to have this because sometimes, no matter how many lights that you have, and you can see I have one, two, three in this room, um, all kind of pointing in different directions so I get a good ambient light because it's kind of dark in this room. Um, no matter what, you always seem to hit a shadow or... You're holding your hand like this, and you're casting a shadow over the miniature, and it's a little bit dark in that spot. But if you could see it, chances are that that headlamp right there will be able to illuminate it. So it's it's a nice to have. I think they're about 15 bucks, something like that. Strap it on your head. You have both hands free. Helps you in illuminating your models. I still recommend having a normal lamp, right? Normal lamp. Have that sucker as well, but as a secondary. I would also uh, recommend the, uh, the headlamp as well. And then, of course, the, the models that you're working on. Um, you could have a lot. You could have a little. Generally speaking, again, what I do is I go on eBay, think about what I want to use, what I want to paint, and then I'll start putting bids down on that with a certain limit in mind. If I win it, I win it. If I don't, I don't. I put a lot of bids down, though, so that I will get uh, something. The danger that you face in that, however, is that... If you put mini bids down, you might win mini bids too. So be prepared if you put five bids down to win all five and make sure you have enough uh, money uh, out there to, um, to cover all that. So the last thing I think that would be um, important um, for anybody that's doing miniatures, I guess, that's going to be selling them is to have a, a good camera and some sort of background to take pictures with. I don't have that. I have a good camera, but I don't have a good background. I'm not a photographer. I don't know how to make any nice pictures with soft lights and all that sort of thing. But if you really need to get serious about it and you really want to, you know, good picture says good words, but don't mask anything. Show them what they're actually going to get. All right, guys, I think that's about it. So if there's anything else you have a question on, just leave it in the comments so I can get to it. Again, these are kind of the basics. I'm a little bit scatterbrained, I'm supposed to, as well. And again, remember, I'm just a hack at this anyhow. I'm not a professional. I'm not your pro painter, or I'm not your less out there or any of those guys. But I do enjoy the hobby a lot. 
uh, in, in my spare time, and I've grown. Uh, like I said, all this stuff right here, including the compressor and all that kind of stuff, amounts to quite some bit of money, maybe five, 500 bucks worth of the stuff here in front of you. And I can tell you right now, just off of doing this a little bit and selling it for a decent price uh, online, I am ahead of the ball game. So I've actually made money on this on this hobby. Um, so nothing better than doing a hobby you could actually at least break even or even make a little bit of spending cash here and there on. You know, and again, if I'm making two, three hundred bucks a month, there's nothing to snuff at. Two or three hundred bucks a month is a few times out to eat, you know, maybe a, you know, the, the odd tire replacement when your tires blow because the roads suck. Um, who knows? So anyway, again, if you want me to cover anything else, leave it in the comments below. Until then, I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope this was a help.